Let's talk a little bit more about how the largest American companies are weathering the coronavirus from a health and a financial standpoint. Joining us right now for that is Glenn Hutchins. He is North Island chairman. He's also a director at the New York Fed. He's on the board of AT&T. Uh, Glenn, thank you for being here today. It's good to see you. Good morning, Becky and Joe and Andrew. How's everybody doing? We're doing pretty good. Um, how do you think American businesses are doing right now? Well, you know, um, we're going to learn about that over the course of the quarter. What I've been uh, thinking about, Becky, and I think maybe we'll talk a bit about is kind of how, as we get in this new phase of gearing up economic activity again, does it look like? What does it look like? Um, and I, you know, I think it's going to come in a bunch of phases, uh, and businesses will experience this in different ways. Uh, but, um, you know, we have to remember that even if the economy is down 10 or 15 percent, we still have 85 to 90 percent of our activity occurring. But uh, I think first there's going to be a bunch of pent up demand. Everybody's going to need a haircut, go to the dentist, uh, get their home and cars repaired. That'll jump back. There's going to be a bunch okay. of net new demand, uh, I think, uh, for uh, as we go into the workplace, sanitation supplies, protective equipment, testing. So that'll be ramped up very, very rapidly. Those industries will do really well once they get they can do it. There are going to be a bunch of activities that we're only going to scale in very slowly uh, as we can do them safely. Uh, air travel is one that um, you've talked a lot about on this show. Uh, there are going to be some activities that will just go away. Uh, we're learning how to do more with less right now. Uh, and um, uh, as an example, I think there's going to be a lot less commercial real estate being demanded as people work more from home. You've talked a lot on your show about the new ways in which movies are going to be distributed, uh, and uh, that movie supply chain will be severely constrained. Parts of that won't come back. I think there's going to be a lot of net new innovation, uh, new goods and services that will be responsive to um, the new, what, new ways in which we work and commute and educate and entertain, uh, and that's where I'll be investing. That's why I've been thinking a lot about this. Uh, and so Maybe I'll stop there, but I think the, the, be, there'll be a fair amount of resorting as a consequence of what goes on inside companies, what they do, what they don't do. We're starting to see some of that already in the earnings that you're, uh, that you're reporting on. And as a consequence, which there'll be market uh, activity that'll reflect that, which we can talk about a little bit later if you'd like. Well, Glenn, well, one of the things I've been thinking a little bit about, in, in part because of what we've been hearing from all these companies as they report their earnings, are, is the huge amount of capital expenditures that are that are being slashed by companies this year. You know, they're they're dealing with watching revenue decline in a lot of cases. They're dealing with uh, higher expenses as they try and figure out how to handle coronavirus and protect their staff that they are keeping. If you're seeing a big drop in CapEx, though, from just about every company across the board, what does that mean just for the broader economy and, and, and the knock-on effect from that? You broke up a little bit there, Becky, but I think I got your question. Look, it'll, I think it'll be, um, there are two kind of things to remember about that. Some of that's going to be temporary uh, because those, uh, to the extent we scale activity back up, that CapEx will come back for the companies that have the capacity to finance it. There'll be some brand new CapEx uh, that will scale up the supply chain for all the things we talked about that we're going to be needing. Um, so, for instance, when you go back to work, you're going to, as, as everybody knows now, you're going to need a whole host of personal protection sanitation supplies. Uh, as well as testing equipment. That stuff will people be investing very aggressively in that, plus the therapy and vaccine pipeline. Uh, and then there'll be some things which, as you're right, they will the CapEx will be reduced. Um, but um, right now, I don't think you can judge that by the drop right now because it's been such a sudden uh, um, uh, stop in economic activity that and companies can't see through the glass darkly and understand what the future looks like. So they're just pausing. You have to you have to take we have to make a distinction between the pause and things that go away permanently. Mm -hmm. You said that you're thinking about a few areas where you think there are going to be some rapid changes, maybe in how we learn. And that's kind of where you're thinking about investing. You want to explain that a little bit? Well, I think, look, there'll be fundamental changes now in the way we work, in the way we educate, uh, in the way we commute, in the way we entertain uh, and the way we compute. Uh, there are a whole the, and entrepreneurs right now are thinking that through and forming new companies around those sorts of understandings. You know, everybody now knows about Zoom. Nobody knew about Zoom in in January. Uh, there'll be a whole host mm -hmm. of companies that will be filling that gap. Uh, that will be net new innovation. I think they will be largely based upon uh, technologies. They'll largely be using cloud computing and and uh, mobile computing. They'll be running across the 5G network, uh, and. Um, uh, and those companies are just being formed and thought through right now. And so that's, as I say, that's where I'm going to be spending my time in the next six, nine, 12 months trying to figure out how to invest there. 
Anything you see that you can tell us about now, or it's still early going on that? Stay tuned. <laughs> Glenn, let me ask you, as an AT&T board member, we just got the news uh, last week, Randall Stevenson is going to be stepping down, John Stanky stepping into the CEO job. What's that mean for AT&T, and how is the company doing right now with all the demands for its services, but obviously the huge change we've seen in the environment? I'm going to let Randall and uh, now John talk about that, uh, the company's uh, prospects, performance and prospects. But I will say that the um, the succession process was the end of a long, uh, deliberate uh, uh, process run by very effectively, I thought, by the board and should not have surprised anybody. Uh, and I think one of the great things about this crisis has been the way the networks, not just AT&T, but the others, but uh, the networks have held up and been able to scale up uh, so that we can continue to not just do things like this, but that our hospitals, first responder networks uh, and uh, market activity, all the, the mission critical things needs to happen to allow enough economic activity to continue during this time period um, to have a base upon which to build has been facilitated. We've been deeply reliant upon the networks and they've done a terrific job and AT&T is one of them. I'm very proud to be part of it. You're also a director at the New York Fed and today we do have the FOMC meeting, the announcement coming out, Jay Powell going to be expected to be talking and I, I think we're all kind of watching at the incredible moves the Fed has made to shore up just about every market out there, really saying that it will do just about anything. What, what do you expect to hear from Jay Powell today? What do you want to hear from Jay Powell today? Well, um, I would say the Fed is in a place where, uh, where again, as I said last time I was with you guys, we're at the uh, end of the beginning. I think that the programs that they put out there have been very good ones. Uh, and um, we uh, now need to kind of fine tune them. I'll give you a couple of examples. The PPP program, which is obviously not a Federal Reserve program, um, was uh, had some significant startup difficulties, as we talked about last time I was here. One of which was not being able to reach the under-resourced communities that weren't uh, didn't have banking relationships or even banking um, infrastructure in their neighborhoods. In the last, uh, this most recent program, we've been able to open up that channel for the CDFIs, the Community Development Financing Institutions. Uh, and other ways, alt alternative channels to get the money out to needy uh, companies in those underbanked and unbanked markets. That's a good example. If you look at the Fed programs right now, I think the Fed has the right set of programs in place, uh, but they have to be scaled up and they have to be fine-tuned. There are a bunch of things that need to be fine-tuned. Uh, um, for example, um, there's been a lot of fin innovation in the last, uh, since the financial crisis and the way companies finance themselves, particularly companies in the middle market. I think we've been very good right now addressing companies that are smaller by the PPP and the Main Street Lending Program, the companies that are larger by some, by some of the primary and secondary corporate dealer facilities, more money market funds, commercial paper, et cetera. But there are a whole bunch of companies in the middle market in the middle who have, or of a size, they might be too big for one program, too small for the other. Uh, and have financed themselves in innovative ways around equipment kind of financing, other asset back kind of financings through CLOs and others that I'm not exact, and using rating agencies that might not be the big three that might get lost mm -hmm. in the shuffle here. And they still have very important uh, people who work, you know, products and services. They are provided by people who value their jobs every bit as much. So there's mm -hmm. a part of the economy we, and the financial markets we need to make sure gets addressed. Glenn, we're about out of time, but I did notice yesterday that your family foundation was going to be working with CARES to to make sure that they are addressing the needs in the New York area. Um, right now, so many people are in need of food, and you guys are stepping up to do some of that. I want to thank you for that. Yeah, my, I'm very proud of my team at North Island. We put it together. We put together CARE, um, the uh, Revolution Foods, which is making nutritious meals, and National Action Network, which is doing the distribution. Uh, and we're going to distribute 135,000 meals over the next two months into uh, needy communities, primarily in Harlem and the Bronx, for people who are in need, plus uh, healthcare workers who live there. Uh, and it's uh, kind of our attempt to try to do something constructive uh, during this crisis. Thank you. We appreciate your efforts on that, and it's good talking to you, Glenn. My pleasure. Take care.